There are things you should know. Turn to page 43 and you'll find out. Everything he told you is a lie. At first, everything will sound like Baudelaire in Braille. It's when heaven turns to black and hell to white. Right to wrong and wrong to right. You must accept the truth, or else we are beyond redemption. Join me. I hope you enjoyed that fake Netflix trailer that I made all by myself. And I want to share with you that it's actually very simple to do, even if you're not a very experienced videographer. I also want to encourage you by saying that you don't need expensive gear to make it happen. I mean, all you need is a mirrorless camera or a phone, a cheap tripod and a microphone. And most importantly, of course, a good idea and a good story. My first tip is use the gear that you already have. If possible, use a camera that has a flip out screen so that you can see yourself and the framing of the shot. I personally filmed almost every shot using the Tamron 35 to 150 mm f2 to f2.8 lens but because it's a telephoto lens and I was shooting a lot with long focal lengths that meant that I had to be quite far away from the camera so I couldn't see what was going on on the flip out screen. But my next tip is a solution for that problem. For most shots I use the Imaging Edge app from Sony on my iPhone and that way I was able to connect my iPhone to my camera and see myself from the phone and remotely control the camera. Next tip is don't reveal too much too soon to the viewer. In the first shot you can see only the back of the guy with the yellow jacket but you can't see his face. This is one of the most important tips that I can give you because when you don't reveal too much too soon to the viewer, it makes the viewer curious about what's gonna happen next and it's gonna keep them watching to find out. You might have noticed that I also used a lot of close-up shots and the reason is that that way it indicates that what the viewer sees is important or somehow relevant to the story Close-ups are also a great way to hide the things that you don't want to be visible in the frame. For example, the scene that I filmed by our kitchen table, I didn't want it to look like it was filmed at our kitchen, but rather open up the possibility that it could have been a spare room or even a basement. And I wanted the viewer to focus on the important things that I was showing in those close-up shots. Also, I did my best to convey the fact that the guy who is speaking on the record player is actually the same guy with the yellow jacket and that the note that the guy with the yellow jacket is holding is the same note that the main character finds between the book on page 43. When I'm filming alone, I mostly prefer filming a static shot just using my tripod. But my next tip is use camera movement, but use it sparingly. That way when you don't overuse it, then when you finally use the camera movement, it makes it more impactful and so much more powerful. One of the few shots where I used camera movement was when the character was running in the woods. If you don't have a slider 
or a gimbal that can follow your movement, then an easy way to get camera movement is to film a wide shot of yourself walking from left to right and then zoom in and use keyframes to fake the camera movement from left to right to make it follow you. That's one of the easiest way and most of the time it works really well. I was lucky enough to have the chance to use the DJI RS3 gimbal which happens to have the active track feature which means that you can connect it to your phone and then select yourself and then make the gimbal follow you and your movement. Now it doesn't work always perfectly but I was able to get a shot that was good enough with camera movement. For the final shot, I actually zoomed in quite a bit to make the shot feel more intense. Those shots from the old vinyl record player weren't actually filmed by me. Those were stock footage from Artlist. And in fact, all stock footage, sound effects, and music in this entire video are from Artlist. And what I love about Artlist is that whatever I'm looking for, it's so easy and fast to find it on Artlist. If you want to check out Artlist, click on the link in the description below and you will get two months free for your subscription. In the final scene, the main character arrives to the location according to the coordinates and he finally meets the guy with the yellow jacket and he's shocked when he finds out who the guy with the yellow jacket is. Now obviously it's impossible to be in two places at once. So the way I did this shot was that I first filmed one shot of me wearing the blue jacket and then I filmed another shot with me wearing the yellow jacket and then I placed both clips on Premiere Pro on the timeline on top of each other and I did a mask on the other shot and made both people, both characters visible at the same shot. This way I did the clone effect. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more about how to film yourself, then I highly recommend watching this video over here. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care.